Hello, my name is Nieves Gonzalo. I'm an interventional cardiologist working in Hospital Clinico San Carlos, and I'm going to present you the first case from the study Empowered Cat uh, included at our hospital. As you know, Empowered Cat is a study evaluating the use of uh, intravascular lithotripsy in, in women. So the patient today was an 81-year-old lady uh, with asthma, um, and she was admitted with a non-STEMI with a normal uh, ECG and uh, some uh, elevation of troponin, a mild troponin elevation. The echo was normal. Um, she had a moderate aortic stenosis that was no more than uh, moderate. And in the, uh, in the angiogram, she had a severe stenosis in the PDA that was considered a culprit lesion and treated with uh, drug lutein stent. And she also had a severe stenosis in the LAD that was the lesion included in uh, Empower because it was a calcified uh, LAD lesion. So this is the culprit lesion that you can see there, a very tight lesion in the, in the PDA. And this was treated with uh, a drug lutein stent with a good result in the same procedure as you can see in this image. These are the images showing the, the left system, and you can see already this stenosis in the mid-LAD, very tight. You can see that there is uh, also involvement of uh, a diagonal that has some uh, osteal uh, stenosis. It's a very tortuous vessel, especially uh, at the distal part, and uh, severely calcified. These are some still images uh, with zoom in the, in the stenosis. You can see Again, this very tight stenosis, calcium, and involvement of uh, the diagonal. So um, this is the day of the procedure. There was uh, a stage procedure. And the first thing we did was uh, predilating a little bit because it was very tight stenosis. And after that, immediately imaging with OCT to understand the type of stenosis we had there, the type of plaque. And you will see in this uh, OCT image that actually the, the lesion was really calcified. We'll see some still images later on. You can see some dissections caused by, by the balloon, but clearly there was a lot of calcium, especially in this area where you can see uh, the calcium was, was uh, thick. If we go a bit more proximal, the calcium was a bit more uh, eccentric, uh, but clearly diffuse area of disease with a um, big amount of calcification. We can check some still images in this, uh, in this next slide. You can see the luminal area was really reduced this, uh, in, this, in this area. And you can see there um, from uh, 3 to 12, you can see this calcification uh, in some areas. It was quite thick, as you can see in the first two frames. If you look to the, to the right, there is this area with a more eccentric calcium that is protruding a little bit. You can see it there from 9 to 12. And then um, some more eccentric calcium covered by thick fibrous areas in the proximal part of the plaque. So based on that, we decided that uh, it was a lesion that needed plaque preparation based on this calcium that, that was thick and uh, thick and occupying more than 180 degrees. So we treated it with a uh, short wave uh, balloon. Uh, we sized the balloon based on the vessel uh, sized by OCT. It was around 2.5 millimeter. And this is uh, the application of uh, pulses. We used the new uh, C2 balloon, so you can see that we were we could have applied uh, 100 pulses, but in this case, we decided uh, to apply only 70 because at the point we had a very good expansion of the balloon in different views, as you can see here, and we decided that it was, um, it was enough. And what is amazing, I think, in this case is, um, this is the angiogram after IVL, so you can see actually it looks really stand-like. I mean, the degree of um, uh, lumen uh, uh, enlargement that we have after just treatment with IVL is amazing. One important thing also in this case, you can see that the diagonal was protected during the um, application of IBL, and this is also an advantage, of course, of using shockwave. We can protect diagonals or branches, and we can keep the, the wire there during the uh, treatment. And, uh, but clearly, in this case, uh, the effect of uh, these uh, applications with very low pressures, you know, four to six atmospheres, and the effect that we had in this very tight stenosis is, uh, is remarkable. So after that, we were a bit concerned about the uh, diagonal, and we uh, dilated it. But first, we did uh, OCT to check uh, whether we have properly uh, 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 fractured the calcium. The angiographic image was really uh, promising. But of course, we always try to make sure that we have broken the calcium before implanting uh, the stent. And these are the OCT images, where uh, you can see, again, this lumen enlargement that is uh, remarkable in this case and also uh, several fractures caused by the application of, uh, of the therapy. We can maybe see this in some still images here. You can again appreciate 
the very big enlargement of the lumen that went from 1.9 or even less to almost 4 millimeter uh, as the minimum luminal area. And again, you can see some fractures there in these um, uh, still images, especially uh, in the two on the, on the right. So as I mentioned, we were a bit concerned about this uh, diagonal, so we decided to just pre-dilate it with, uh, with a small balloon before implanting the stent in the main branch that again was sized using uh, imaging OCT. We chose a 2.5 by uh, 33 millimeter to cover all this uh, lesion. This is the final uh, result in angiography. You can see a very, very good result. The, the diagonal was pinched, but was, the flow was preserved. And um, we decided just to, to let it like this. You can appreciate how, how tortuous the vessel is uh, distally. Luckily, this segment that we treated was quite, uh, quite straight. Just to, to um, about the outcome of the patient, she was discharged the following day. Um, and there have been no uh, procedural complications or any adverse events through uh, the 30 days uh, follow-up. She is now in a longer follow-up, and until now, she is, she is doing well. So just to show the pre and post, or the baseline and final result, and uh, for me, the main messages of this um, study, of this, um, of this case, uh, we know that severe calcification is frequent in old women with coronary stenosis. For this case, the main challenges uh, were related with the presence of this bifurcation, this diagonal that was also a disease at the osteum. We wanted to protect it and keep the wire there, and we were able to do that with uh, IBL. The other problem we had was distal tortuosity, and this is again or can be a problem, especially when you're going to use a tracheotomy, etc., for example, to, to cross certain types of wires into these very tortuous vessels that we find in these old ladies. So really, I think it's, it's a case where IVL provided a safe and very effective tool uh, that allowed protection of the diagonal and very significant lumen gain just using uh, low pressure. Thank you very much. <laughs>